Hello and welcome to the Watchman on the Wall channel. This prophetic word excerpt comes from Veronica West, Northern Ireland, UK. God waits. Who will cry out? I shared the other day that God does not initiate revival. God waits for a cry. He waits for the sound of distinction to penetrate the deepest realms of his glory. He waits to hear the voice of the hungry and the thirsty. God waits, but who will cry out? I believe true revival happens in the prayer closet, not in the pulpit. Revival is carried in womb of intercession and birthed in the room of divine consecration and separation. There is an absolute necessity for the rebuilding and the restoration of all the broken down altars in this hour. It's going back to the altars of prayer with a cry of revival. It should be on the hearts of all believers in this critical hour. The destiny of the next generation depends on our willingness to make the sacrifices we need to make now in the place of prayer. Fervent, unrelenting prayer is crucial for true revival and a move of God. Without prayer, there can be no revival, no spiritual awakening. And make no mistake, there will be strange fires, false revivals, counterfeit moves that will draw many in, only to lead them to the pit of greater deception and destruction. God is rebuilding altars of true revival. He's raising tables of reconciliation in this hour while the enemy is constructing counterfeit altars and laying tables of defiled delicacies before a generation who are blinded by the powerful and enticing demonic acts. Prayer is a sacrifice and an act of labor in the realm of God. The sweet-smelling sacrifice of prayer is what provokes the fire, the falling of fire, and the manifestation of rain of his presence. We know that throughout history, revivals have been birthed through seasons of dedicated and fervent prayer. I often think of the Azusa Street Revival, which was a true revival. It only was achieved through hours of daily prayer. And I heard the Spirit say, Watch, for I am arising keepers of the flame. Those who will become living sacrifices upon the altar, listen, for I call you the righteous remnant to repair and rebuild, to restore the broken down altars, to prepare the living sacrifice that my fire may fall. I call you to build me tables of reconciliation where the living bread, the new wine of my spirit, can be poured out upon the nations. Watch as homes will become altars and tables of reconciliation, places of divine habitation for my glory, Goshens that shall be a light in the midst of darkness. Our generation must recognize the necessity of prayer and be willing to go back to the altar if we desire true worship. Without prayer, there is a danger of a whole generation passing without the transformative power of God. Revival is not achieved through preaching alone, but through the fervent and dedicated prayers of believers. Hallelujah. Friend, will you pray into this word with me? Lord Jesus, we are the ones that are crying out. We are the ones, Father, who are committed to prayer. Lord, we are praying to you right now, Father. We're saying, Restore the altars. Lord Jesus, bring repair and rebuild and restore that which is broken down, Father, in our lives, in our cities, in our families. Lord Jesus, we pray that we can, that we can ask you, that we can be that living sacrifice. Lord, when you say, whom shall I send? May my friend, may, may I be the first ones to raise our hands saying, here we are, send me. Lord, we will cry out. We will cry out, Father, and not wait for certain pastors or certain ministries or denominations or certain moves, Father, but we will proactively cry out to you, Father, for your power to fall, your fire to fall, your anointing, for your revival reigns. Lord Jesus, I pray that you don't have to wait any longer. I pray, God, that we, you, you would see us as calling out to you, Father, and in your time, in your purpose, in your plan that you would act in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.